Okay, we're here this morning with Jeffrey Kavensny. It's nice to see you, Jeffrey. Good nice morning. to see you. Um, so the point of these little recorded videos is to get to know each coach. Um, and I guess the first question would be, let's learn a little bit more about you. Will you tell us about yourself? Sure. Um, I got my bachelor's uh, in communications and advertising back in 2009. And after a few years, decided to switch gears and got into education. Uh, been an elementary school teacher ever since. Started as a first grade teacher and then jumped to fourth grade, sixth grade, and then uh, started a STEM program for the last couple of years uh, at our school. And that's been running really well. And and it's it's been a great, a great fun change. So will you actually tell us a little bit more about STEM? Because I know some parents are listening and going, science, math. It's unusual to have somebody so passionate about STEM. Why are you interested in STEM? Tell us a little bit about building that program. Tell us more. It it's it's just really it's it, it incorporates so much into something that could be perceived as ugh math, ugh, you know, science or whatever. It's there's there's so much more to one subject that you can bring in the engineering, you can bring in the technology. And, and I mean, who doesn't love technology, right? The kids love it. So it, it relates more of the stuff that they do. Cause we have like a Minecraft program that we use where they can do some Minecraft coding and that's really big with the kids. And, and, and they just, they love that kind of stuff. And it, they don't even realize that they're learning anything because they're doing this, this thing that's fun to them. So it's, it's just really cool to be able to incorporate all of that stuff and, then you know when you assess them later they're like oh how did, when did i learn that you know it's just did it you know it's it's just really fun it's, it's a sneaky way of guiding yeah exactly um i mean it's a perfect segue actually to executive functioning what some people go oh executive functioning you know they envision it as i don't know organization and maybe time management they are those things but sometimes mm -hmm. it can it's so dry. It's so boring. And your coaching style is anything but dry and boring. So tell us a little bit about what executive functioning means to you, how you got interested in executive functioning. Why EF? It, I really, being on the education side of things for, for now almost six years, I, I knew there was another, another piece to that puzzle. It, it wasn't just the curriculum. It wasn't just teaching and, and learning and, and that back and forth. There's there's the part where the executive functioning comes in. And I, I really wanted to learn more about that to see, you know, what exactly is going on when my kids are sitting there watching and, and learning and, and there's, there's all of these background processes. And, you know, when they hit these, these road, these, these potholes, these, these speed bumps, why are they hitting the speed bumps? And, and that's what got me sort of interested in that aspect of it. And, and knowing that, it, I knew it was going to help me sort of become a better educator. And then as I get more comfortable with that and become a better educator, it sort of cycles and I just get better here and then better here and, and, and learn from all of these different facets. And what's so awesome is your certification. So you're ADHD certified. You're an ADHD certified educator. Are, do you see in the classroom when you were saying these, these background processes, are there kids that are in your classroom that are smart and you know are capable and you know they understand, even your sneaky Minecraft mm -hmm. <laughs> teaching methodology, but they're just kind of falling short, the bumps in the road that you're describing? Like how, how do you help those kids? So a, a lot of times what I will do is you, you can look out sometimes most of the time and you can just kind of see after a few minutes, the eyes kind of start to glaze over and, and, you know, they're wandering. So a lot of times I'll bring them back with a little physical activity. I, I pulled on a couple of, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Go Noodle. It's a, it's a physical education um, website that plays videos, indoor recess type activities, things like that. So we'll do like a three, four minute, let's get up, move around. And it kind of helps them reset and then sit back down. Okay. Let's, let's get refocused. Let's, let's see where we're at. Let's talk about what we were doing before. And then it kind of helps them not only remember what we were doing before we did that little activity, but then it kind of, they're able to shut down sort of the, that those, all those wandering thoughts because they, they're able to get some of that energy out. Cause a lot of times it's just built up energy that they need to, to get out in some way. Yeah. And it's so curious as a coach, right. To be able to do that one-on-one -on -one. it's 
a pleasure, mm -hmm. I think. I know the classroom management, I don't know, I'm not a classroom educator, um, but I can only imagine there's lots of moving parts. With with one-on-one -on -one coaching, it's so much easier. You can right away see, is this kid, is this high schooler, is this college student? I mean, it's not just for little when we get distracted. Right. It's, I know I get distracted in team meetings or Same. even- <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I would love if somebody goes, Hey, Maggie, I can see you're kind of distracted. Would you like to do some jumping jacks? I would be like, <laughs> um, awesome. I, I think yeah. it's really creative and really cool. Um, well, tell me actually how you would define executive functioning for people who may have heard through a neuropsych assessment or from whatever, from the internet, you know, my child struggles with executive function um, and they come to you and go, what's executive function? What would you respond? How would you respond? So to me, it's it's sort of like if you wake up in the morning and every day you wake up, there's a giant, not maybe not even giant, but there's a, a big pile of laundry sitting at the foot of your bed. And that laundry is a mix of your your darks, your lights, your towels, your blankets, your your socks. It's it's learning how to prioritize, okay, do I need to do my what do I need to do first? What is going to to help me or how how can I um how can I look at this pile and say, how can I prioritize this so that I can get it done without totally taxing and, and messing up my entire day? How can I, what do I need first? Do I, do I need my towels first? Do I need to take a shower first so I can get my towels? Do I need my blanket? I don't need my blankets right now because I don't need to go to sleep for another 12 hours. So it's, it's looking at the, the big pile, sorting it into the smaller piles efficiently and without totally burning you out and then tackling them one at a time until it's done and it's totally clean and and you can sit there and go wow okay that wasn't that bad I love that because I'm thinking of that metaphor so many people just kick the pile over or just look at the pile and go that is so intimidating I don't even know mm -hmm. where it started and it's so messy and I don't know how to untangle it and I don't know how to sort it. So I'm just going to ignore it and avoid it. I, I absolutely love, I don't know that it's a definition, but it's a fantastic metaphor of what is executive function. It's the pile of stuff that we can sort through. So I guess my question right. to you, you started to answer this, but it, how do you work with a client that has a jumble? And they come to you and they're a junior in high school and mm -hmm. they say, this has been piling up for many years and I'm intimidated or they don't even say that necessarily. They say, right. I'm, good. I'm good. I don't need you, Jeffrey. My mom signed me up to work with you <laughs> and I'm good. Like, how would you even begin? Well, it's, it's, it's looking at that, that jumble. And, you know, there's, there's a few different ways. There's, there's the snowball, right. Where you can, you can start with the little stuff, the easy stuff to knock out so that you can have that, that little, that little rush, that, that sense of accomplishment. Like, okay, I just finished this task in five minutes. Let me try the next one that may take 10 minutes. It may take five or 10 minutes. Then you knock that other, you know, sort of small, medium size one out and you go, okay, I'm going to take a little, take a minute to myself, and then I'm going to knock out this one that's a little bit larger. And then it's like kind of snowballs, like a snowball gets bigger as it goes, as it goes down the mountain. Right. So, you know, there, that's, that's one way, or, you know, you could do it in the opposite way where you break that snowball down and you say, okay, I'm going to knock out this giant one first. I'm going to take this one out. And then the list doesn't look as intimidating because the big one's already gone. And then you can work your way down and, and, and get rid of it that way. It's such a curious thing. It's making me think of just writing down what needs to get done. Right, exactly. That is so huge because so often there's so much mental space that's taking avoiding the pile and just being like, it's so big. And that's why you were like, it's, mm -hmm. giant. it's not so giant, but it feels giant. It, the yeah, exactly. That it's giant. And then when we start working with clients going, okay, breath, I'll, I'll scribe, you talk, what mm -hmm. Just hit me in no particular order. What's all the stuff that need that's on your plate. And then right. you see the relief that you're like, okay, there's 30 items. There's 50 items. Like there's not 7,000 items, right. but if and those, I'm sorry. And those 30 items, I mean, they could even be at that point you say, okay, well this, 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 and this are really all part of this little group here. And then separating them into, instead of looking at 30 individual things, well, now you've got five or six groups 
and then it looks even more manageable. Totally, totally, absolutely, 100%. Um, well, I want to learn a little bit more about you. You know that our okay. company's um, philosophy is strengths-based. We we don't just look at what's wrong, what's the giant pile, what's complicated and, and going right. wrong, but we also look at what's going right. What are you doing well? What are your strengths and what do you bring to the table just naturally? So that's my question for you. What are your strengths? What do you bring to the table naturally? I, I'm a I'm a sucker for a good routine. Uh, I have the, the same exact routine every single morning so that I don't forget my keys, so that I don't forget my my wallet. It's it, I, I have this, you know, same time every morning I wake up and then I, you know, I eat breakfast and then I, I just go through this step by step by step. And it's become such a habit that I, I don't have to worry about, am I going to be on time for work? I have my, I've lived 10 minutes away from work, but I still put the address in, in ways so that it tells me you need to leave by this time in case there's traffic. Like, I don't, I don't like being late for stuff. So it, 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 it kind of makes me, so I just having that routine and knowing that I've got that fail safe really just helps me out Love that. For, okay. through my day. And then with the lesson planning and stuff, you know, my day is, from nine to 10, I have this class from 10 to 11. I have this class. So if I'm not on point, then things can start to back up. So having that routine and being able to stick to that routine, it took a long, it took a while, but having that and, and knowing that I can count on that, uh, is, is huge. I'm so curious. Is it something you learned or is it something you think even since little Jeffrey is a little boy, were you, Oh no, little Jeffrey had, did not have it together. <laughs> oh, okay. So tell us more. So it's a strength now, but it's a strength that you've built and learned over time. How? Right. Um, it, it was out of necessity because I, I, it, there was a time when I, I was late for work a lot. I was, I wasn't, I wasn't meeting my commitments. I wasn't getting my work done. It, it was, it was tough and it, it came out of necessity. So I was like, okay, I need to sit down and I need to start figuring out my, my priorities throughout the day and what needs to get done first and what needs to, what can wait because things can wait. Um, and then, and then knowing that I'll have time to tackle those when, when I can, you know, it's, it's really, it's realistic to, to not get to, to, to certain things, but knowing what those things are and, and learning how to prioritize those things is, it took me a minute. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I had no idea because you're so organized that that is so fascinating that it's something that you learned. That is just so fascinating. And it's so curious. I think for teenagers are like, I'll never be the one that's there on time or mm -hmm. early, imagine the one that's early or the one that's following. Right. That's not me. I'll never be that person. And then you can be like, yes, that empathy that you're like, I know what it's like to be, you know, nervous and running late right. and, and feeling like things are chaotic. And here's what's worked for me. I mean, a good mm -hmm. coach obviously doesn't say, here's what's worked for me. Therefore it'll work for you. Exactly. Exactly. So, and, and, and knowing that you will slip. I mean, there are a couple of times where I've hit the snooze button where it's, there's just, nope, not today. And you hit the snooze button and you forget about it for a second and you wake up and it's, and it's not five 30 in the morning anymore. It's, it's six 15 and you go, okay, now what? And then, and then deciding what the, that process looks like then, but it's important to know that it's okay to mess up. It's okay to slip. It's just getting, not letting it totally ruin your entire day. It's getting, being able to get yourself back up into it. And, and how do you recover from that mess up? Oh gosh, it's so huge. Right. Whenever I talk about what is time management, time management, I think the the part that's so key is it's not just breaking down time. It's also assessing how long something will take and adjusting. Mm -hmm. Like that's the secret sauce, adjusting accordingly. Yep. So yes. Even if it's not on our regular, like the 615 thing is a perfect example that you're off. Many clients would go, well, that that's shot to the heavens. You know, <laughs> I, I had a plan, but now I can't follow that plan. So mm -hmm. yes, again, and instead adjusting and going, what can I let go of? Cause I'm going to have to let go of some of these things. So mm -hmm. how can I get into a place where I'm regulated and I've got a plan, but it's not my original plan. I mean, that's tough, especially right. when oh, no. it throws us off. So like, how do you adjust accordingly? How have you learned? Is that what something you'd say is a strength or a weakness of the cognitive flexibility? 
it's 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 a little bit of both because the priorities can can change too. It's it's not it's not a okay. I woke up at six fifteen. I can I can skip this and this. It it just it's one of those things where it depends on the day. Unfortunately, it's it's I know that I have to walk the dog. I know that I have to uh, I know that I have to eat breakfast and I know that I have to brush my teeth. Um, you know, and obviously, you know, getting my, my keys and stuff ready. There's, there's a couple things that I just, that, you know, you just get rid of it. It is, it's a strength and a weakness that, that at times it, it can be both. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I know we're getting into the nitty gritty, but it's so interesting of the little things The they mm -hmm. see minute and they're huge. It can really set up our day or really set up the day for good or for right. bad. Um, and I think of so many students that are getting ready to go to class at their university or class if they're in middle school, high school, you know, elementary school, and their day is in a tailspin. Where's my homework? Where's my homework? Where's my homework? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, do you see that in your classroom with kids that you know are dysregulated when they walk in and you're going, ooh, it looks like they had a tough morning? I, I usually start my, so we just started, we went back to school two and a half weeks ago. And I, my, in my classroom routine, speech or spiel or whatever i i make sure that every even the kindergartners i'm like i i use that has anybody ever heard of waking up on the wrong side of the bed and they raise their hand everybody everybody knows that i said you have to you have to tell me though you have to come like come into class and say you know mr k i i'm not having a great day you know tell me a little bit what's going on if you want to if not i let them kind of just come in and chill for a minute and just take that breath that they need i said you know you will still, we're still going to go through the lesson and stuff, but you know, if it's a group activity and you want to by yourself today, then that's totally fine. If just, just to give them time to process their day and to, to reinsert themselves when they're ready and knowing when that time is, you know, I, I make sure you know, you can't sit, you know, you can't hide all day. It's, it's not going to solve any of the problems that, you know, that you may have had this morning, like come back, insert yourself into the fold and and we can work through it together and and figure out how to make the rest of your day go a little smoother because it, you can't let it ruin the rest of your day because that's no fun yeah and I'm just thinking of how phenomenal you are as a coach in that same moment you know I'm talking about mornings but also in afternoons you don't usually mm -hmm. meet with the morning so in the afternoon where they're also it's had a tough day a draining day sure they had a fight with a friend. They had a test go not to their expectations. Mm -hmm. you know, do you also pause with clients? Is that something that you do during coaching? Do you, how do you recognize when they're off and they need a little bit of a break? You can after after this long with you know with working with students and and clients. It's it's you can you can usually see it, especially after the first couple of sessions. You you get to know the personalities you can, you can see it. And, and then you, you know, instead of, you know, how is your day? You could even, it's like kind of, kind of seems like today may have been a little, a little rough on you. You know, do you want to, you know, do you want to talk about it? Did that, did that impact your, the, the ability to, to, to get your stuff done? Did it impact any of your, in, any of your normal scheduling that did, did you miss the bus or, or you know it, it could even be something like that where you know the bus was late getting them home or or whatever the case may be and okay so you know you're here now even even if they are late to the to the meeting you're here now let's let's see how we can reset take that breath take that necessary like two three minutes let's just reset let's talk about the things that led up to this point and strategize if it happens again how can we manage it to our advantage what a gift what a gift for you to have that with clients i just what a gift because how often do we have somebody that allows that that doesn't say okay time to do this time to execute on this you know and really going you don't need to tell me and come to me i'm going to recognize it in you and i'm i'm going to accompany you through this. Um, and it doesn't have to be a big, huge thing, but just mm -mm. It looks like, look, it looks like today is rough. Um, yeah. you want to tell me about it? If you don't want to, can we take a couple seconds? I love it. Um, well, we talked about strength and then we got all the work in a really good <laughs> way. Um, weaknesses. Let's talk a little bit about weaknesses. We all have okay. let yes. us in on what's hard for you. 
ta task initiation isn't so much the issue. It's 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 continuing and staying focused on a task that may be one of those that is an hour, two hour, three hour long task. I I I find myself doing this sometimes when I'm in the middle of something and just wandering and, and thinking about other things that the 37 other things that are going on or, or, you know, and just not being present in that moment, trying to get that thing done. And sometimes it's hard for me to rein myself, to reel myself back in. And that's, that's probably my biggest, as far as that goes is, is just, okay. I just wasted an hour you know, thinking about, okay, what am I going to make for dinner tonight? Okay. Let me look up this recipe. Okay. Now I just lost an hour that I could have used for the task that could be done by now. Instead, I was looking up recipes and, and, or, or whatever the case may be, you know, I'm just using that as an example, but it's easy to go, you know, the dog comes in with a ball. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll throw the ball for you a couple of times. Next thing you know, it's two hours later. Yep. Yep. But where did the time go? Totally. So what do you do? So that's the million dollar question. How have you, is it still a work in progress? How, what do you do? What are tricks and tips you found that work for you? So, so for me, and, and this doesn't work for everybody because overstimulation is, is obviously a, an issue, but active noise canceling headphones and earbuds mm -hmm. for me, and just playing some like ambient music and, and focusing on that when my mind wanders and just like, instead of thinking about this and this and this, I'm like, oh, this is a really nice this is a really nice song. This is a nice, nice tune. This is a nice, whatever the case may be arrangement, whatever. And then I can go, okay, let's keep going. It's it, that has helped me. And obviously that's not an option for every, everybody because you know, over that can overstimulate people as well, having the, the constant noise in their ears. But for me, it helps center me and keep me focused on what I'm doing. I love that. Oh gosh. I love that. Um, well, talk to me a little bit about Zoom. I know we said a minute ago, you know, what does it look like in a classroom versus mm -hmm. individually? Um, tell me about coaching through Zoom. Do you like it? Do you hate it? One of the biggest pieces of feedback that clients will say to us is, my kid has ADHD. I have ADHD. Sustained attention is already hard for me or for him. Right. Or for him. What how in the world are they going to sustain attention for 50 minutes? How would you respond to that? Doom is cool in that there are a lot of interactive pieces to it as well. It's not just, hey, look at my slides. Hey, look at my whiteboard. Look at, watch me, watch me do this thing. It's, there's a lot of features that can allow the client to interact with it as well and, and keep their attention on it, whether it's them interacting on the whiteboard and helping me with, moving rearranging the list around or or that kind of thing there's there's the option to let them share their screen where where they can show me their side of things and what their side of things looks like and then I can interact with that and help them with you know whether it's it's it, their their list of assignments or or their their schedule or whatever the case may be and and seeing a little bit into from their perspective what it looks like it's I, I know that the online back and forth, I, I get that it's where it's, you know, you're, you're just staring at a computer, but there's so many interactive components to Zoom that we take advantage of that I, I think, I think helps a lot with that. It's, of course, you're going to talk about the tech, of course, because you're so tech <laughs> and scientific and mathematical. It's so interesting. It wouldn't even occur to me. I just kind of use it, but then I don't think about it. Um, it's so fascinating. And I'm sure you know so many more bells and whistles than I do. I'm, I'm sure your your students and your clients appreciate that tremendously and, and that you use that as a tool. I'm, I'm jealous. I think it's awesome and showcases just what a great coach you are. Um, talk to me about the one-on-one, -on -one, the last question is really about one-on-one -on -one versus group. And I think we've touched on it actually of classroom dynamics versus one-on-one, -on -one. Mm -hmm. you know, what is it like to be a one-on-one -on -one coach? What do you think about are some of the benefits or potential pitfalls of working one-on-one -on -one as an EF coach? I, I think there are, there are, there are benefits to, to both the, the group and the one-on-one. -on -one. I think there's, there's so much opportunity though when there's when there are a group of people for somebody to feel like maybe they didn't get their time they didn't get their they didn't get to say their what you know what's bothering not bothering but what's what's going on with them maybe somebody who had had a, an opportunity to more monopolize the the conversation or whatever with the one-on-one -on -one, there's no there's none of that I, I feel like people that have that opportunity appreciate it more because it's it's 
all eyes on, you know, it's them. It's, it's what can we do for you? Not necessarily what can I do for, you know, everybody, which is, it's a great opportunity to, to work with groups as well. But, but the people that have the opportunity for the one-on-one it's, I think the benefit there is it's all about you. And, and I am here for you for this, for this 50 minutes. Like it's, you tell me what's going on. I can tell you what I think is going on. And then we can, we can lobby ideas back and forth and we can just work together in that way. And it's all about you. Yeah. I love it. And I think that's what that individualization you just so extraordinary about really understanding intuitively what's up, helping the client maybe see what's going on, even if they're not mm. forthright about it. Right. Like, talking like you're noticing you're and you have the time to say this is for you you I know Mm -hmm. coaches we often have our plans for how where we want to bring the client what we see is the trajectory of where they need to go and some of the skills they need to build and if they show up and all of that's thrown out the window because they're in a really focused place and we're like let's Mm -hmm. big pile that you've been avoiding let's go Or they're in a really dysregulated place and we're like, whoop, we need to pivot and we need to figure out right here, right now, what I can help you look at. It's, it's extraordinary. And I think you're so apt at doing that and reading the room and adapting accordingly. So I'm going to brag on you because it's, (laughs) it's a necessity really it's not easy to be able to do that. It's not easy to not have a script in front of us and then recognize what it is the client needs and guide them there and accompany them so they figure it out. Right. Um, So I guess the floor, that was my last question. So the floor is really turned to you. Is there any last words, anything else you'd like folks to know about your approach or yourself? Um, not really just just knowing that 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 impossible pile of laundry isn't impossible and and anything can be done as as long as we are willing to to sometimes it's going to be difficult you know so if we're willing to to do the work and and we can we can do you know you've got the support we can do it together that's that's why we're here so nothing's impossible is is basically my my last point i guess is what i'm trying to say love it so so don't yeah so don't what, so don't, don't just don't fret, you know, it's, it's, we're here for you and it's, it's going to be fine. We'll, we'll take care of it. It may not be in a day. It may not be in, a, you know, two weeks, but it's, it's going to happen and, and we can, we can get there. Love it. Jeffrey, thank you so much for carving thank out you. time to talk to us. All right, Jeffrey, coach extraordinaire. Am lovely to talk to you. Love to see you. Likewise. So Have a good day. Bye-bye.